Larry Julian, God is my CEO, following God's principles in a bottom line world. Dive into the world of business through a spiritual lens and God is my CEO, following God's principles in a bottom line world, by Larry Julian. Discover how successful executives integrate God into their workspaces to create harmonious and empowering environments. Learn how placing faith and spiritual principles above profits can lead to happier employees, conducive work cultures, and ultimately, higher long-term gains. Explore real-life examples of CEOs, like Bill George of Medtronic and C. William Pollard of ServiceMaster, who have successfully intertwined their faith with their business practices to make a greater impact. Godly Ideals for Profitable Companies Integrating godliness into the workspace can lead to happier, more productive employees, and longer-term profits, says successful executives who prioritize their faith and spirituality. This book defies the notion that running a profitable company and following God's will are mutually exclusive and suggests that embracing God's values can alleviate workplace stress. Purpose-Driven Business Medtronic CEO Bill George spent years turning down the opportunity to run the world's largest medical technology company due to his ego-driven ambition for a bigger role. However, he eventually realized that he was where he belonged and could lead with his values and beliefs at Medtronic. Similarly, C. William Pollard, the head of ServiceMaster, focuses on putting God above profits, creating an environment that maximizes the potential of its employees. They believe that a purpose-driven business philosophy leads to profitability and provides dignity and worth to all employees. Success Beyond Materialism Bob Buford and Jerry Colangelo share their journeys of realizing the importance of faith and purpose beyond material success. After losing his son, Buford shifted his perspective and founded the Leadership Network to support church leaders. For Colangelo, his relationship with God helped him turn his focus outward to making a difference in the community. Both emphasize the value of living a purpose-driven life with faith as a guiding force. As Buford puts it, the knowledge that we live our life with God's help provides the confidence, conviction, and focus that will move us forward regardless of circumstances. Leading with Courage Al Qui, former Republican governor of Minnesota, opted not to seek re-election despite media pressure after he realized it wasn't God's will and wouldn't serve the greater good. He also chose to work with his Democratic successor. Marilyn Carlson, CEO of Carlson Companies, found herself summoning a lot of courage after losing her 19-year-old daughter in a car accident. Instead of remaining angry, she spent a lot of time reading the Bible and used lessons learned to improve as a leader. These stories teach us that courage doesn't always manifest outwardly in a heroic way and that humbling oneself before God can change one's priorities, attitudes, and relationships. Faith and Patience When faced with challenges, Tony Dungy, former head coach of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, and Archie Dunham, CEO of Conoco Incorporated, turned to their faith and learned to be patient. Tony used his favorite Bible verse to help run his team, which eventually led them to become the 1999 NFL Central Division champions. Archie learned to surrender his problems to God, which resulted in a successful career as chairman of the board. Both men found that integrity and seeking God's will in their actions were key to their success. Finding Peace in Faith at Work Jeff Kors and John Beckett share their personal experiences of integrating faith into their workplace. Jeff struggled to balance his task-oriented nature with his faith, leading to a personal crisis. He found peace by distinguishing between working for God and being with God. John's wake-up call to integrate his faith into work came when his employees tried unionizing. He committed to creating a compassionate yet accountable environment, investing in employee development, and prioritizing family. John's tangible actions backed his commitments, leading to a positive outcome. Leading with Faith In Leading with Faith, two CEOs share how their faith kept them grounded during times of turmoil. After his investment firm went bankrupt, Tad Piper gave control to God and became a calmer, more rational leader. With his faith as his guide, 
he led the firm out of bankruptcy and to success. Jim Secord faced similar challenges when his company was sold three times within 16 months, causing a great deal of uncertainty for his employees. By staying in touch with his workers, displaying integrity, and preparing for layoffs, he minimized damage and gained the appreciation of his team. Transforming Low Morale Values Linda Rios Brook, general manager of KLGT TV, faced the challenge of managing the station's most profitable, yet morally questionable program, The Jerry Springer Show. Faced with the conflict between ratings, revenues, and their family friendly agenda, Linda decided to turn the program into a counseling opportunity for people in crisis. The solution was to put a crawl at the bottom of the screen, redirecting viewers to a biblically-based crisis counseling center. The overwhelming response led Linda to understand that God defined success with his own standards, in his time, and by his plan. On the other hand, Brenda Scott, African-American, and CEO of the Mobile Convention and Visitors Corporation, encountered serious racial tension in an all-male board when she took office. Seeking God's help and refusing to back down, Brenda listened to her constituents and transformed her organization, leading to its recognition in the Top 50 Convention and Visitors Bureau's rankings. Leadership Through Serving Others Leaders who prioritize their employees' needs create a workplace where creativity and loyalty thrive, resulting in excellent customer service. Jim Bergeson, CEO of Call and McVoy, follows the philosophy of servant leadership, and as a result, his employees feel safe to be creative without fear of failure. Similarly, Horst Scholz, CEO of a hotel company, ensures his employees receive proper respect and dignity, resulting in one of the industry's lowest turnover rates. Both demonstrate the value of prioritizing people over profits, leading to happy customers, loyal employees, and long-term success. Balancing Employee Needs and the Bottom Line The key to balancing employee needs and the bottom line is integration, not compromise. This is exemplified by the stories of Andrea Ritchie and Ken Melrose. Andrea chose to keep 30 employees despite pressure to cut costs, and her decision led to greater bottom-line prosperity and improved employee morale. Ken Melrose shifted the Toro company's culture from profit-focused to employee-focused, incorporating the biblical principle of servant leadership and involving employees in building the business. The result was a workforce that is committed to the business and contented customers. Chick-fil-A Founder on Life Beyond Work Chick-fil-A founder S. Truett Cathy strongly believed in observing the Sabbath and closed all 1,000 of his fast food restaurants on Sundays. Though Sunday sales could have brought in an additional 20%, Cathy valued his belief in spending time with family. Similarly, Bob Nagel, chairman of Rollerblade, learned that success in business did not outweigh a focus on important things in life. He demonstrated his appreciation for his 280 employees by distributing over $4 million when 50% of Rollerblade's shares were sold. Both exemplified the message of giving and prioritizing the significant things in life over work. In summary, God is my CEO, imparts the wisdom of integrating spirituality and faith into the world of business. By placing God and godly ideals as a top priority, executives are able to create nurturing and empowering work environments that benefit both employees and the bottom line. Through personal stories of CEOs like Marilyn Carlson, Tony Dungy, and Brenda Scott, the book illustrates the power of spiritual convictions in steering businesses through challenges and maintaining their integrity. As a reader, you will be left with valuable insights into how your own faith can guide you in becoming a more compassionate, wise, and successful leader.